Bergman Show is an 18 plus show that is purely entertainment only. It's a made up person with a made up name that lives in a made up town. Therefore, it's not a threat or promote terrorism. So don't take him seriously. Frank Weasel! Hello, mercenaries. Welcome to the 37th episode of the Merkman Show. I'm your host, Mr. Bonkers. And damn it, I am pissed off. Not as pissed off as I was earlier, but I'm still pissed off. I have something to get off my chest, but we'll get into that in a minute. Kind of goes along with my review for the X-Men Apocalypse. But let's get that crap out of the way. Uh, well, let's get this stuff out of the way. Beginning with Mega Mangus. And here's your bit of anime news. Um, the only thing I can dig up right now is that Ruby uh, Chibi has a third episode up on YouTube. Be sure to check it out. It's really freaking funny. And still no word on the uh, Ghost uh, Ghost in a Cell movie. No word on that yet. Uh, so, and uh, no details on on MTAC on the 2017 release dates. But when I do. I'll, find, I'll be sure to spread the word. But yeah, Ruby Chibi Episode 3 is out. Check it out. And that's it for Mega Manga. And now it's time for Who's Got the Balls. And also, Dick of the Week. And he's, well, for the first time ever in Merkman history, this shit kind of comes together like crams. Like, they just, they just, like, got together and just fucked. Just kept on fucking until they made the most god-awful, ugly-ass child that the world could even imagine. It's like you got, like you birthed a demon that came out of a vagina. It's fucked up. Alright, now let's get on with who's got the balls. And I only have two things for you. It makes sense, two balls. But, you know, not a whole, again, not a whole lot of news has happened, but I do have a bit, you know, enough to write down in this little cue card here. Beginning with the NHL, the Penguins win. Uh, I guess Pittsburgh owns the Penguins, and I don't know who the SJ is, but anyways, Pittsburgh Penguins has two, SG has one. And then for the final bit of sports news, MLB, uh, the Cubs beat the Dodgers. Uh, Chicago Cubs win two, the LA, uh, LAD, which I guess is the Dodgers, got one. Now you're probably wondering why, why the fuck was that sort? Well, this combines with the dick of the week. And this week's dick of the week, and if you're from the South, I recommend you turn this shit off right now. Because there's a high warning that this might piss you off. Get ready for that psychotic meltdown. Because this affects you guys. So if you're from the South and you love the Merkman Show, want to keep watching it, then turn it off right fucking now. And okay. So if you stuck around, then damn it. <laughs> you're either really a big fan of the Merkman show or you're from up north. But my good buddy, or that's actually my arch nemesis, the corporate CEO, he didn't want me to go see X-Men Apocalypse. He called up some uh, guy, I want to say his name was, where was it? I forget. Uh, his name was Billy Bob. Okay, that wasn't his real name, but he was just some redneck jerk asshole who kept shushing, telling my friend, me and my friend, Anthony and Al, to shut the fuck up. You don't tell the Merc Man to shut, up, shut the fuck up. You don't tell Anthony to shut the fuck up, and you definitely don't tell Al, my uh, buddy Al to shut the fuck up. You know... I, I don't talk during movies as much as it, you know, as much as annoying guy I am. I don't talk during movies. I don't. Now, I do talk, I do whisper during the previews, and then a stupid-ass commercials. I don't know when the fuck did this shit. Whoever did this gets smoked a shitload of pot. Comes up with making commercials before the movies. Nobody wants to watch that shit. They can just turn on their television to see that shit. Nobody watches that shit. And why the fuck are you putting commercials before the movies? But anyways, I was, I was talking during the commercials, and then... I whispered during the previews, like, oh man, I saw Assassin's Creed. Did you ever find out one of my favorite franchises? And this stupid redneck motherfucking asshole said, can you guys shut up and calm down? What the fuck, dude? It's a fucking southern accent. And that's what the dick of the week is. The dick of the week is 
Southern Jocks. All right. Guys, just stay away from the nerd shit. Stay the fuck away from X-Men. Stay the fuck away from Avengers. You don't have to see this shit. It's just like, well, there's nothing new today. I plowed all the things in the farm and I'll be able to go to, you know, old howdy doody. Uh, you know, I guess I'll go to the movies. Ain't got nothing better to do. And I, I can't do as good as the Iron Art Simicist, the corporate CEO. He's, a, he's the biggest redneck I ever met. But... Man, why? Why the fuck do you gotta pick a fight with good old Anthony and the Merc, man? Why? Alright, I never once talked during X-Men Apocalypse, even though there's a couple things, so I was just like, holy crap, and I held it in my head. I held it in my head, and I behaved myself, but I just wanted to take that guy out to the back, take his gun, take my gun here, shove it right up his asshole, and shove a fucking bullet flying out his pecker. Uh, you know, I'll be like, like, bigger than, you know, screw Independence Day. If you want to see 4th four, four July fireworks, just have me shove this gun up this guy's ass and watch a bullet come out his penis. You know, out the tip of his cock. And then, you, you know, it's like, like, just, just shut the fuck up, you fucking cock ass. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, okay. Alright, fine, I'm gonna flat out and say it. Is it from I'm up north? Is it because I'm born up north? Well, guess what? People in Michigan are actually kind of awesome once you get to know them. And, yeah. Well, guess what? A, my family was in Europe during the Civil War. And B, I'm not sure if I really count, count as a Yankee or not. I mean, I was born in Michigan. Yeah, I moved down here. And you have General Motors to blame, blame for that shit. Take your anger out on General Motors. Seve. All those motherfuckers. Not us. They're the ones that brought us here. Not, you know... if. If I wanted to for fucking them, I'd be like my my aunt, uh, retired in Miami, Florida, you know, looking at titties and shit instead of doing this shit. I mean, what do you want, huh? What do you want? Do you want me to apologize for what happened in the Civil War? Okay, if not, all right. I apologize that we took away your slaves. There, you happy? Well, here's, guess what? Newsflash, they're human. I can blow my brains out right now. And just go, bang, blood everywhere. You notice that uh, if you go to a fucking hospital, and some guy gets shot, and then a black man gets shot, guess what? You're both bleeding red, you dumb fucks. We're all human beings. He's a human being. They deserve to be free. And thank, and damn it... <clears throat> A lot of interracial shit when, you know, uh, interracial things. That's a good thing, guys. The fuck's your problem? Goes right back to the fucking Confederate flag thing all over again. Frankly, I don't care if you fly the flag. I don't. I don't give a shit. It's history. Whether I like it or not, it is history. I don't mind it. But damn it, don't take your fucking anger out on someone that isn't from the South, alright? That's fucked up. Fucking cock ass. So, because of that, redneck jocks who just sit there and play football, watch football. Yeah, there you go. I mean, the the, the geeks like me, Anthony, we don't watch sports. They actually hate that shit. You know, the closest we geeks have to sports is video games. Alright, that's fucked up. And I apologize in advance if and this truly really is me apologizing. If this offends you, I'm sorry, but it had to be said. Just when I go to the movies, just leave me the fuck alone. I leave you guys alone. I don't I give me I gotta throw a bunch of whole bunch of popcorn and fucking a box of bonbons or or you know you want me to pour your goobers all over you? I don't do that shit. Just let me enjoy the movie. Stay the fuck away from nerd shit. If you don't want nerds talking about the movie, then guess what? Don't see the fucking movie that attracts fucking nerds. It's not rocket science. Okay, calm down, Mark Man. Calm down. Gosh, you haven't had a psychotic meltdown like this since Disney Infinity's Boba Fett shit. But yeah, this week's Dick of the Week it deserves it big time, and that is for any redneck jock.
that either that yells at the geeks. Cause guess what? Guess who helped you through home those days with the tough assignment that way you go home and fuck your cheerleader girlfriends? Us nerds. You ain't got our underwear, but yeah, you come to us to help for your homework. Us nerds. If it weren't for nerds, you wouldn't be where you're at, you dumb pi pieces of shit. <sighs> Alright. Okay, I didn't mean uh, to rant on that long. Okay, rant over it. But the dick of the week is Southern Jocks. Alright. Now we're moving on to X-Men Apocalypse. But before the stupid redneck guy it ruined it for me. Congratulations, C corporate CEO. You actually kind of ruined something for the Merc Man. Go get yourself a fucking jack-off jizz champagne. But, anyways... X-Men Apocalypse. What to think of it? Okay, it's, it's... It doesn't suck, but it's not my favorite. Um, my favorite X-Men movie by far is the X-Men First Class. And believe it or not, the first X-Men I saw. The very first movie. X-Men Origins, Wolverine, the first Wolverine movie, sucked, but then the second one came out when we went in Japan, and that kicked ass. Deadpool kicked ass. So, there's there's good movies that take place in the X-Men universe, but sometimes it's, an X-Men movie just falls flat on its ass. And it wasn't until the very end, like, okay. I'll save that for the spoilers. Uh, but, for those of you who want to see it, um... Spoiler free, this is a spoiler free part. Um, amazing effects. The, uh, the, the, but there's too much CG again, but still good effects. Um, they could have done a better job of Apocalypse than the makeup. Um, but you get to see characters like Jubilee makes her appearance, and Nightcrawler reappears, and Angel reappears, and all kinds of cool shit. Um, the acting was pretty good, decent, pretty good. Um, you know, that guy who plays Quicksilver stole the show. I'll get into that in the spoilers. But, um, is this movie worth going out and seeing in theaters? No. Is it worth renting? Yes. That way you can watch it. And if you like it, you can buy it. If you don't like it, you can tell the, the whoever directs the X-Men movies now to fuck off. Uh, so, with that said, um, that it's not in between good or bad, um, I'm gonna have to give it a 3 out of 5 for it. You know, go out and see it if you want to, but I would just wait for it to come out on DVD. Or Blu-ray these days. Everybody on demand, since everybody seems to just download that shit on their phone anyways. Like, I, I like to have a physical copy, because, you know, it's still, we're still in the age where it takes forever to download shit. Ask anybody that owns a fucking Xbox whenever they, Microsoft makes an update, we live out in the boonies. I mean, people are still making moonshine, Microsoft. Give us a fucking break. Uh, but anyways. Alright, so. That'll do it for this, uh. Before, okay, I, I have to tell you what, I'm going to go into the spoilers after this. Let's move on to the last bit of news, and that is, um, the games on the Microsoft uh, waiting list for backwards compatibility, only one squeezed its way through. And, like a, like a sperm entering the egg of the female. Only one made it through, and that is Black Ops, Call of Duty Black Ops. That is now backwards compatible, however... Bioshock 1, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite. Nope, they take those off the list. Those are not, and I repeat, not backwards compatible. It's gone. It's over. Does this mean we've seen the last of Bioshock? No. Because it's rumored, and this is a rumor. I'm not take this with a grain of salt, guys, but it's rumored. Bioshocks 1, 2, and Bioshock Infinite, which I guess you can count as number 3. I've heard rumors that it's going to be re-released as a remastered. As a bundled edition. So in other words. They don't want you to download that shit for free. Even though you already own the fucking game. They want you to sell it. And probably get five bucks off of the. Of the re-release. You know at GameStop. And you know with all three games. I'm sure it'll be like five bucks. Um, 
and put it towards remaster. They want you to rebuy the Bioshock games. That's what they want. That's why they said, fuck you to Microsoft. Alright, well, that'll do it for this episode of the Merkman Show. It's not over, because this show's not over. You know, there's still a spoiler section for X-Men reviews. Total freedom. But if you want to see X-Men, then uh, this is goodbye. So, don't forget to subscribe for more content. Send me a, uh, comments in the, there, uh, in the comment box. Uh, like this video, it helps. And remember, don't pay. Don't take anybody's side. Pick a good contract. I'll see you guys on the next Merkman show. Squawk of a pterodactyl. I'm Rodan. Okay, if you stuck around to see that stupid shit, then that means you went and saw the X Men movie. All right, total freedom. Wow, uh, I still stick with the original score, but that movie had its moments. Um, I frankly, uh, I love Quicksilver. He was a badass in that movie. That's probably like the best part of the whole damn movie. Uh, is Quicksilver rushing in, saving all the uh, the students in Xavier School before Apocalypse blows it up. Uh, but there's a lot of cliche moments in it. Um, for example, they shoot a bunch of nuclear weapons. Everybody in the whole fucking world, North Korea, Russia, the United States, they all just send their missiles up in the air, up in space, and it just hangs there. It doesn't ever once comes down on the ground. It's just like, woo, bottle rockets. Woo, shoot them off into space and fuck it. Yeah. Um... We finally get to see how uh, Professor Xavier finally gets bald. Uh, we just named this X-Men. Professor X becomes bald. That's basically what this movie should have been. Apocalypse was actually kind of a weak villain in this. And that's disappointing because Apocalypse is supposed to be a bad motherfucker. The one that one mutants all fear. And now here's my issues. The Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen needed to be a mixture of two good guys and two bad guys to prove that Xavier can control uh, mutants. But they only choose to control one bad guy. And the one person they chose made no fucking sense whatsoever. And that's Magneto. Magneto has always been an enemy to Apocalypse. As long as I've known Magneto, he's always been an enemy. Nope, he's a cool little ally, because why? Because he tried to lay low, took Professor Xavier's advice, lay low, tried to have a good job. He saves some poor stupid fucking idiot from getting crushed. Everybody sees his powers, and then that sends the police over there. The police try to shoot him with an arrow, he dodges it, and it hits his wife and, and daughter. Kills them both. He loses his shit and becomes evil again. And he's all like, I'm Apocalypse, I can magnify your power. Look, he can lift dirt off the ground. And, and here's the part that pisses me off. Magneto's helmet. That thing blocks all mental communication. How the fuck does Apocalypse go through that shit when he's wearing that fucking helmet? It doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. Oh, guess what? He does fight in the apocalypse. Near the fucking end. This is until it becomes the end where he finally becomes a good guy and helps out everybody. Meanwhile, uh, the way they did it was stupid. Storm and Magneto become good guys. Mystique is normally a villain. He's a good guy throughout the whole fucking movie. Uh, Psylocke, who's like a mercenary... He's evil and never once helps out the good guys. Never once. Archangel's supposed to be a fucking good guy. Storm becomes, becomes evil, but then she becomes a good lady once he finds out how much of a dick Apocalypse is. And finally, Xavier's like, Noah Jean Grey, I had enough of this shit. Become the Phoenix. Whoosh! She kills Apocalypse right then and there. I was like, if she can kill him this whole fucking time as Phoenix, what's the fucking point of turning Magneto into a good guy? Where he should have been a good guy in the fucking first place. 
Oh, and my character Jean, Gr uh, my character Jubilee, the one I truly saw the movie for. You don't get to see her powers. You don't get to see her shoot fireworks from her hands and be a badass. Fuck no. You just see her be a tour guide to the Xavier School. We have already seen the Xavier School. And here's the stupid shit. And this, this is Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was in X Men 2, and he never met anybody. Are the past movies no longer relevant? What the fuck? But, you know, uh, but, however, there was one good thing that came out of this. This is where that spoiler part comes in. Bam, we have Wolverine confirmed in this movie. Then Mark Fox did really well to hide this shit. Hugh Jackman, Wolverine is in it as Weapon X. He has no helmet. They actually had him fucking right this once. Not like X-Men Origins when he runs fucking butt naked through the farm. And these farmers are like... Hey, there's the naked man. Put clothes on him. I hate that movie. Fucking X-Men Wolverine. The reason why I got it is because it was the only thing that had Deadpool in it at the time. Then Ryan Reynolds finally stepped in, took the balls, and fixed that shit. So. So that's what I mean. I, I mean, they've, the story was good. Um. The story was really good. It was just they just fucked up with a lot of shit. It was way too long. A lot of cliche moments. Pointless destruction. Uh, but the acting was phenomenal. Um, you know, it fits really well uh, with the story. Um, at the end, the characters actually look like they're supposed to in the comic books. Mystique finally has that white dress on. Uh, Mag uh, Nightcrawler's finally wearing red. Um, Cyclops is wearing yellow. I mean, they got it right at the end. That is the end where they got that shit right. So that means we better see Wolverine wearing the yellow spandex, damn it. Still waiting on that shit. <sighs> but... but... That's it, guys. That's, that's what I give it. I give uh, X-Men Apocalypse... A 3 out of 5. I want to give it so desperately a 2 out of 5. But I'm being open-minded. I know they're trying to reboot the franchise. I know they're trying to pick it up on its good graces. And I respect that. And so um, I, I have to say if it wasn't for Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, and Quicksilver, this movie would have gotten a 2 out of 5. But that does have its moments in the movie. Uh, I don't know about this. I don't know how I feel about this one, guys. So, um, you know, just just see it and pretty much judge for yourself. But my personal opinion is not to see it in theaters. Just go out and watch it on Blu-ray or DVD when it comes out. So I give it a 3 out of 5. Alright, guys. Now, here's the real ending of the Merc Man Show. Um, I'll catch you guys next week for episode 38. Um, don't forget to subscribe to become an official mercenary. Get notified when a new video is out. Um, like this video because that helps out the Merc Man. It helps him get money. And, uh, and if I piss you off with the whole Southern Racial thing, leave a comment and I'll, I'll take my whoopings like a man. Uh, Alright guys, well that'll do it for this episode of Merc Man. So remember, uh, don't take anybody's side. Pick a good contract and I'll see you guys on the next Merc Man show. By the way, Olivia Munn, that's another reason why I didn't give it a 2 out of 5. See, it was fucking hot as our first movie. Alright guys, take care.